what miracle were they looking for? They saw dangerous dimensions of God. But at the slightest opportunity, they bowed to bow. They committed adultery with Ashtaroth. But your incense can be corrupted by fire. And when you begin to read scriptures, you now find out that the Bible speaks about strange fire. Strange fire. Spiritual maturity entails the ability to keep your fire pure from the coals of the altar. My generation right now has all kinds of fire in their bosom. And the number one fire that is plaguing us is the fire of sexual immorality. Strange fire. And you see, as I tried to engage the Lord for tonight's meeting, I couldn't take this picture out of my mind. That people are burning incense. You know, prayer is incense. Worship is incense. All of these things are ascending into the courts of God. But which fire is sponsoring it? Which fire is sponsoring it? I hear people many times come and say, I have done everything. I have prayed. I have done everything. But it seems as if God does not answer my prayer. If it were in the day of Nadab and Abihu, God looks beyond the incense. He judges what? Fire. What is the, 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 the wellspring from which all your spiritual devotion flows? What is the fountainhead from which all your love and commitment to Christ flows? On what basis are you actually building your relationship with God? There's no time. Uh, maybe we'll do that as a full Bible study. But you see, in scriptures, there are depths in God and there are heights in God. And when we are speaking about depths, we are speaking about intimacy. Intimacy. Fellowship. Experience with God. So as you mature in your work with God, your depths in him will become deeper. And notice, in building depths with God, is hidden life. Hidden life. Intimacy is not something that is for public. No matter how you love me now, that sometimes when you lie down on your bed, you say, what a man of God. God, give me what that man has. I've not seen, ah, Kai, I love this preacher. Let me just bring my wife here now, on this pulpit, and then we begin to get intimate in public. Wait, wait, wait to be this. Won't you think that I'm a madman? I'm a madman. Intimacy is for hidden places. This is why people who think that the deep things of God can be found in a public meeting, they don't know God. A public meeting is supposed to be an avenue to stir you to begin a deep journey with Jesus. When you hear a teaching, when you see a preacher bring revelations from the, from, from the realms of God, what it's supposed to do is to provoke you to say there, there are things about God that are hidden to me. If this man can find it, I too must be willing to make the sacrifices that will allow me to find it. Intimacy with God, depths with God are only found by men who have given themselves to secret lives with him. It's a hidden life. This is what led men to become monks. This is what gave birth to monasteries. People separated themselves from the world and went to hide in caves in the hope that a God that is hidden will show himself. They submitted themselves to difficult routines. 
I was reading about a, a, a mystic, a Christian mystic called St. John of the Cross. And I was lead, reading about the disciplines of his life. I started reading Christian mystics because of my, my mentor, A.W. Toza. He quotes them in his books a lot. Christian mystics. And I'm not talking about mysticism in the sense that it is idolatry and all kinds of demonic things. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about men who became masters of the spirit life. Who understood what it meant to be one with God in divine union. I was reading St. John of the Cross and he said that, that there is, there is, there is, there is beauty and wonders in silence. That was a man that could sit still in God's presence for hours. Basking in the warmth of his presence. His mind will never wander. You can't even pray for 15 minutes without thinking about rice and beans with Dodo. You, you can't even pray for 15 minutes without your mind wandering to the new, the latest episode of Big Brother Ninja. He can sit for hours. And he calls it the ability to be able to ascend the Mount Carmel. Without any, he can lock his mind from the distractions of this realm. He has fixed his spirit on the realm where God dwells. There are depths to travel in God. And those depths will never be found in the secret. Part of what spiritual maturity does for you as a priest. Notice that the, the, the tabernacle was compartmentalized. The deep things of intercourse with the great immortal spirit happened where? Behind the veil. One on one. Wait. Is it that God could not decide to come into the inner court where all the priests were? At least all of them were eating from the table of shoe bread. At least all of them stood by the golden lampstand. Can God not come there? Why did he choose that he said, I will meet you at the mercy seat. And this meeting will happen where? Behind the veil. Behind the veil. God, there are depths in God. The average believer in my generation has not become deep with God. Because by the time you read Leviticus 16, for you to go behind the veil, you must go with the right kind of fire. No, brother. The right kind of fire. I remember the first time I read scripture and the Bible says that the eyes of the Lord will not look upon iniquity. You know there are certain iniquity that are easy to identify. Immorality is easy. And those ones are easy to see in your life. But when you have begun to lust within your heart for fame, when pride has begun to sit upon the table of your soul, when the lust of money has possessed your vessel, we can't see it on your forehead. But remember that the one that you are dealing with, he even knows the thoughts you are thinking before you think it. So he knows what your proclivities are. He knows, as we are sitting in church now listening to this message, he knows where every man's heart is. He knows. So as you pro approach the veil to want to go into depths with him, what he's looking at is your fire. What is powering your incense? So depths with God is what brings you into the fulfillment of your destiny in him. Heights with God is what brings you into your destiny fulfillment of things for him. Because for him to use you to do certain things, there are certain stature you must be able to get to in the spirit. So sometimes when we lead prayers, you will hear us say that you can't pray from the ground. You have to ascend to certain heights in the spirit for you to either be able to see or for you to be able to enact authority. There are heights in God. Heights. And even though every one of us are called into God to fulfill a destiny in him and a destiny for him, there are many that will die outside that fulfillment. Not because God is wicked, but because they are unwilling to make the sacrifices necessary. For instance, our destiny in him is not unique to an individual. What is available to me 
is available to my brother. Our destiny in him, what was available to Idausa, is available to all of us. Our destiny in him. But our destiny for him is unique to every individual. What God wants to do with your life is unique to you. And if you never dare to ascend the mountains of God, you may never look upon your scrolls. This world will look very attractive to you. You will get to a point where you have all the money in this life, have a car, and you will think you have arrived. And yet in heaven, they are calling you a failure. Because your life does not mirror what was written concerning you for him. Look at Paul now. When Paul had finished his own assignment, he was bold enough to say, I have fought the good fight. I have run the race. I have what? Finished my course. My God. It means that he knew when he started. He knew what he was called to do. And he knew when he finished. He goes further. He says, I'm now ready to be poured out as a drink offering. Don't envy men that can die for Jesus if you have not ascended your own mountain. If you are still at the foot of the mountain, you will never know why a man is so loyal to God, even to the point of death. Say, I've finished my course. What am I doing here if I've finished? I'm ready to be poured out as a drink of The average believer has been in church for many years until now. He doesn't even know whether his destiny journey has started. Well, how will he be able to say, I have finished? How? And you see, not all of us will be as lucky or as favored as Paul was that he had become old before God encountered him. He had become old. Then God had to interrupt his life to begin a journey with him. If you've been attending here long enough, I have told you many times, if you are above 15 years old and you cannot at least say, this is what God wants to do with my life, you are wasting on. And you see, if you refuse to go deep with God and ascend heights with him, there are three things you will suffer naturally. One is spiritual decay. Two is spiritual waste. Three, you will become a victim of spiritual adultery. If you refuse to go deep with God. And what do I mean by spiritual decay? Your spiritual life, instead of progressing upwards, will be dying. And you know the thing about the Christian faith, dear brother, is that you can be faking it and nobody will know. Nobody will know. You can be faking. Oh my God. I met people who have been in church for years. Yes! Then when you touch the fabrics of their spirit, you know they've never met Jesus. They don't know God. They know how to pray. They can recite prayers. But they've not grown deep with God. Nothing about their Christian life is secret and deep and rich and sweet with God. All they have with God is in the public. Spiritual decay. That's why you're always rising and falling. Rising and falling. Today you are high. For the next six months you are dry. Spiritual decay. Spiritual waste is when you have received so much from the hand of God. Impartations. You are falling 62 times. Cost the church where they did the meeting expenses they did not need. You broke all the chairs. In fact, anytime they see you near the camera, they, because of you now, they have put barbed wire around their video camera. Barbed wire. Because they know that you, the power of God, you have an affinity. And like we said in the IEC, there is nothing wrong with fall. If you fall, but make sure you do what? Get up with something. Get up with something. Many of us have become like stagnant waters. Full of the giftings and the graces of God. It's just that nobody is drinking from your fountain. You are useless to yourself. Useless to the body of Christ. Useless to God. 
you are, you, are, you are a collector. You know that there are people that are collectors. They travel to countries. They see a fine art. They say, wow. They pick from China. They put it on their shelf. They travel to Lebanon. They say, wow. They pick a painting. They put it on their wall. They travel to Ghana. They see Kente. They, they buy. They put it. They travel to Sierra Leone. They say, oh, their own my mind is the best. So you enter their house, all the flyers of all the great programs in the city. They say, you, you day when apostle come, say, Kai. Say so that meeting. After that meeting, I had the revelation. There was an angel standing by my side. And he said, I made you an evangelist. That meeting happened five years ago. He has not won one soul. Once. He said, I had, I had a revelation last week. I was in so-and-so meeting. He's just a collector. He likes to be around where God is moving, but he doesn't want to make the sacrifice to become the things God is showing. Because prophecy must be worked out. A great word can come to you concerning your destiny and you will die outside the fulfillment. Not because the word was a lie. Every prophecy has an associated sacrifice. If you never pay it, you will never become it. Spiritual wastage. And spiritual adultery is where a man no longer knows which well to drink from. Everybody is his man of God. As long as you refuse to mature spiritually, you will suffer a lack of discernment. It's a natural consequence. The more you become familiar with the realm of God and the things of God, one of the things that will be activated in your life is a sharp discernment. As I'm in this town, I can tell you people who are doing ministry and are even doing big programs in the city and I will tell you for free, they don't know God. I don't need to listen to a man for two hours. I don't need to hear his teachings, listen to many tapes. If I hear him talk, I know how men who visit that place, I know the sound of that place. I know how their spirit is. Most of the time, if I want to touch somebody's spirit, I say, bring the person, let me see the person. As you are talking with me, I'm checking. That place that I am familiar with, has this person been there? I can tell. So Paul will tell us that we know no man after the flesh. Spiritual adultery. That's why many people are not, they are no longer sure of the waters where they do. Everybody who comes on the pulpit. You know now, this our apostolic thing is popular. So there are people who are doing combined service. They have this our apostolic thing, but they are, they are fu furnishing it with a fire that is not from the altar. So the Bible says, can a man take fire in his bosom? And not be burned. This is the whole essence of the teaching tonight. Part of what spiritual maturity does for you. Is that he guarantees. That you do not bear strange fire. And Paul was showing us. 1 Corinthians 10. Let's continue that teaching. That's where I want to continue. 1 Corinthians 10. I think it should be verse 12. Verse 12. Remember this where we read last week. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take it, let's fall. Go further. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will also make the way of escape that you may be what? 13. No, therefore, my beloved, flee from what? Idolatry. 15. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. Last verse, 16. Uh, what did I put here? Okay, go back to verse 12. Go back to verse 12. Aha, uh -huh, 12 and 13 is my emphasis. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands, take heed lest he fall. Go back to the first verse. 
1 Corinthians 10, 1, where we began, or 10, 6. 10, 6. Uh -huh. Now, these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they what? So, Paul is tying it. He tells us that the beginning of every man's strange fire is desire, lust. Lust, desire. Every fire that 